In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how to use and modify the Lens Flare special effect. So I'm going to take an image, actually a movie, of a windmill and drag it down into track number one. I can go ahead and play it and we have the windmill turning and the wind blowing the leaves and that's about it. So I'm going to make this a little more dramatic with a lens flare. I'll stop it. And we will go to our effects room, the FX on the left side. And I could click find it here, but it's easier simply to go to my special and pick it out of the smaller group of called lens flare. I'll drag it and put it on the effects track. And, and then I'll stretch it out a little bit. So what does it do? Well, I'll double, you see what it does is it, it inserts um, a bright light over up here on the left with some rays coming out and then some subsequent lights and then the flare, larger flare over in the lower right. Let me show you how to change that to fit what you want. I'll double click on it and here are my options. The size starts out at 100. I can make it bigger or I can make it smaller. I'll click on reset. The brightness starts out at 100. Again, I can make it brighter or I can make it less bright if I want to. We'll hit reset there. The frame size, if I click it to the right, it tends to send these rays out longer. Moving it to the left, it reduces them. I'll reset again. Uh, clicking on blend, the default is zero. Now it kind of blends into the image. We have other lessons on blending, but this is just one where it, 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 it becomes part of the background image. We'll leave it at a zero blend. Frame alpha, I haven't been able to figure out exactly what it does. I move the slider and don't see the changes. Um, there's no documentation that I can find right now for this. I'm just going to leave it alone. The light size, if I move it to the right, that's changing the size of the light, not necessarily the brightness. So it's similar to the other one, but not quite identical to my brightness control. Then we have two others. We have a center position and a light position. What's the difference? If I click on the position under light position motion, this controls with a red dot where this is on the screen, the brightest light. And I can't move it off the screen, but I can move it anywhere I want to on the screen. So I can move it up to the upper right corner if I want, for example, click on OK. The center position motion, that is the corresponding one over here, but it's actually the distance between the two. I can, on the same angle, draw them closer together or make them farther apart, or I can actually change the angle of that. And so it would maybe look like it's coming down over here. That would be an example of what I could do in that particular case. So we can change um, all eight, or actually nine, of these options in Lens Flare. You can also use a keyframe, which means you click on the keyframe, you can set all of these at the beginning of the clip by moving the scrubber over to the left side and just clicking on the diamond for the particular setting. Or you can also then move the scrubber over and change in the course of time what the setting is going to be. I can maybe make the size a lot bigger at this point in time. And so that's how to begin to look at keyframing if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that. So um, I'll go ahead and simply close that out. I'm going to double click again, get back into my lens flare properties. We'll reset it to normal. And I'd like to, for the sake of this particular um, one, change one thing I haven't shown you, which is the lens flare type. First of all, I'm gonna change the position. It's in the trees. I'd like it just to be uh, maybe just a, bit, a little bit outside adjacent to them. And I'll click on OK. Now I'm going to change the type. Unfortunately, they're not named in a way that really helps a lot, but I'll show you that the default is type 1. If I click on type 2, 
I've got kind of a greenish look to it. If I click on type 3, um, the look hasn't changed a lot, but the, the, the look of the uh, reflection here is more of a six-sided look. And if I click on type 4, we've got a rounded look and a little bit of a bluish tint I'm suspecting here. For the, for the sake of this particular video, I think I'm going to click on type 2. I like it how the effect of that on the leaves over here. And um, we, could, we could also change the, um, the position of the center if we wanted to. And maybe make it going, well, maybe over here just for fun. I'll click on OK. And now, with that set, when I go ahead and play my movie, um, let's see how long I want to play it. It's not very long here. I'll click on the preview. And there we have the wind blowing. We have our lens flare. Now watch it in a second what happens. It goes away. And that's without the lens flare. And uh, not nearly as dramatic. So um, sometimes you want to add something special. You can do that. It almost looks like a sun in the sky in this case, which isn't the only potential use for lens flare. But I hope you found this helpful as you continue to grow in using special effects in CyberLink PowerDirector. Mm -hmm.